There are two types of people in this world, those who love the BMW i7 and those who hate the BMW i7. I feel like the people who dislike this car though only feel that way because they don't really understand it. And it's my mission today to bring you all to your senses because I feel like if you don't love this thing, there's clearly something wrong with you. Or me, maybe. But hear me out. Firstly, maybe the main point of contention is the looks. It's challenging, like many recent BMWs. It's big, it's bold, and it has the most enormous grille I've seen on any car, along with a contentious light design. But in profile, to me, it has the looks and proportions of a muscle car. Squint, and you might mistake it for a Dodge Challenger. Round the back, from a distance, it looks a tad more normal, but if you get up close and personal with the i7, you'll start to notice some very clever touches. This grill can actually illuminate all the way around the outside edge. It feels like BMW are beating us over the head with this massive grill design until we love it. I've fallen for it. I think it's really, really impressive. Sadly, this car doesn't have that particular option on it, but I've seen it and it looks great. I also think these headlights look great. You've got this split level design, so the DRLs up top and the LED main beams down at the bottom, and you can get optional Swarovski crystals in the upper level. Again, this car doesn't have it, but I've seen it and I love it. Speaking of things I love, which this car also doesn't have, these doors open automatically. You can actually use voice activation. You can say, hey BMW, open the doors and they'll open to let you in and close as well. Or you can press this button and they'll do the same thing. They haven't fitted it to this car, but I've seen it and I do love it. And speaking of things that I love, down here on the C pillar, you've got the BMW triangles, and just down there in that corner, you've got a little heart shape. See, this car loves you, and you should love it back. The interior is extraordinary too. It looks upmarket, as a 7 Series always should, with high quality materials, including leather, wood, and in true modern BMW style, crystal. There's also a lovely interaction bar, running the full width of the dashboard and into the doors, which can change color depending on your drive mode or to alert you of danger when you open the door and there's oncoming traffic or when you're about to hit an object. The seats are wonderfully comfortable too. They're soft with good support and plush headrests. It's not all perfect though. Well, I do like the look of this screen. It's got this big curved display in front of you, one screen for the driver, one screen for your infotainment system, and it looks beautiful. The graphics are absolutely insane. If I actually start the car, you've got some information for your vehicle there. If I turn the wheel left and right, you can see the wheel turning left and right in the graphics. It's beautiful to look at, and it's very, very responsive as well. So if I go into the navigation screen and zoom in, you can see how quick and responsive that is. You don't get that in a lot of cars in this class, so I like to see it. However, I don't like the fact that it does take a little bit of time to get used to the actual user interface. It's very, very difficult to wrap your head around and you're going to need to use the manual. Look at that mess of a climate control menu. It's absolutely overwhelming at times and very difficult to use, particularly when you're on the move. There are some buttons, you think they're physical buttons at first, but they're actually not, they're capacitive and they do make things slightly easier to use because they're shortcuts which put you directly to where you want to be in the menu, but they don't feel fantastic. Even the iDrive controller, which looks gorgeous, it's a crystal knob, is essentially just a big capacitive button. And speaking of capacitive, the hazard lights aren't on a physical button, it's a capacitive touchscreen. And how do you open the glove box? There's no button down there. It's this weird looking folder thing, you press that, and the glove box opens. It's just not, it's just not intuitive. Sorry. I know I'm meant to be defending the i7, but I can't hide my true feelings. So what's it like in the back? Well, this is where all BMW 7 Series cars excel and the i7 is no different. It's magnificent in the back of this car. A proper space to just lounge and enjoy yourself. Loads of room in terms of leg room and headroom, plenty of that. You've also got a big fold down armrest here. Where are the cup holders, you might be asking? Well, you push this button and they pop out. You've got two cup holders in there, you fold that away, you pop that open, you get a little bit of storage, two USB ports, bosh, bish, bash, I believe is the saying. The i7 actually has two displays in the rear doors 
and these do an awful lot. So let me talk you through a couple of my favorite features. If you push the blinds button and close all, it will shut the blinds in the doors, in the ceiling, and round the back. If I press open all, it will do that, except in reverse. You can also control the media playback from the radio, etc., and control the seats as well. Not only can I recline my rear seat slightly, I can also control the front seats and move that away from me to give me even more leg room. If I kept this button pressed long enough, I could probably crush the front passenger as well if I'm feeling particularly unkind. And there's even massage, several different massaging programs in here, including a random setting to keep you guessing when you're on the move. But that's not the best thing about the back of this car. The best thing is the fact that it comes with the Fire TV app. Push that and then push fold down and you've got yourself an enormous 31 inch 8K widescreen display. Incredible. It's just outrageous, isn't it? What can it do? Well, it's Amazon Fire TV, so it's a bit like a USB dongle that you plug into your television, which means you can access various apps, including Netflix, Prime Video, ITVX, YouTube, Freevee, whatever you like. Right now, I'm gonna try and play a little bit of Amazon Prime. Let's fire up some Keanu Reeves, shall we, and see what that's like. That's incredible. I mean, it's running off a SIM card inside the glove box and even though it doesn't fill the entire screen there is a mode that allows you to stretch the picture so it fills it as much as possible even though there is no native content available right now for this display but it looks absolutely tremendous and you can actually plug in a device of your choosing it's got an hdmi port so you can connect a nintendo switch for example and just enjoy the back of this car if you don't love this your heart is made of stone So, as I alluded to earlier, the BMW i7 is not built on a bespoke electric platform. It shares its platform with the normal 7 Series. Now, normally you'd look at that and think BMW are cutting corners here. To build the best electric car you can, typically you need a bespoke platform. But actually, when you look around, there aren't too many shortcuts that you really notice in the i7. All the numbers are pretty good. Let me give you the core specifications first and foremost. So it uses two electric motors, one up front, one round the back, plus a 101.7 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. And that's net usable capacity, by the way. That is good enough for a range of 382 miles and it has a 200 kilowatt recharging capability. Charges really fast. So it's got good specs. What's it actually feel like to drive? Genuinely exceptional. I mean, it's a really, really plush car. You expect 7 Series cars to be plush, but this takes it to a whole new level as far as I'm concerned. First of all, the suspension in this car is brilliant. Normally in EVs, the suspension tends to be very firm. They tend to be heavy cars and you need stiff suspension to control the vertical body movement. But in this, it's really plush. I know it's a 7 Series and it's meant to be, but actually, this feels more comfortable and more compliant than even the petrol versions. The refinement is exceptional as well. It's a very quiet car. It's electric, so you'd expect that. But even in high-end electric cars, sometimes you can really hear the electric motors whining, especially when you accelerate. But in this car, they're almost completely silent. There is sound, but it's generated through the speakers just to add a little bit to the driving experience. I'll come back to that in a second. The actual driving experience is very good. The steering is so light, but there's still a little bit of feedback in there and it's so easy to place this car exactly where you want, which is important because it is a massive car. The accelerator and the brake are nice and progressive as well. They've got this really plush feel to them, which means that it's really simple to accelerate and brake smoothly, which is important, especially if you're carrying passengers in the rear, enjoying a little bit of action on the cinema screen. And it's also an entertaining car to drive. Let me show you a few things. So if I press the My Modes button on the center console, I can choose between 
a bunch of different themes. So personal is customizable, but if I go into sport, it gives me a red glow on the ambient lighting. If I then switch into efficient, that makes the car obviously more efficient, but then expressive, this is my favorite because it makes the car sound very, very entertaining. Look at this, if I accelerate, <laughs> that noise, it's a bit like what you get in a film score. I'll do it again. And then when you slow down, you get a similar kind of synth noise from the brakes as well. I'll just come down to uh, about 10 miles per hour just to give you the full treatment. It's brilliant. You get the low frequency, the mid range and the high end as you get towards the crescendo. It's hilarious. So it was composed by Hans Zimmer, the legendary movie composer. And when I reviewed the BMW iX back in the day, I criticized the sound in that car saying, you know, they've got this big time film score director and the sounds weren't all that, but in this, they've really pushed the boat out. It sounds tremendous. What's the performance like? Well, let's find out, shall we? I'll come to a stop here. Now, apparently it will do 0 to 62 in 4.7 seconds and 149 miles an hour flat out. I'll do a bit of launch control. The whole car is shaking. And then off we go. It's a sturdy launch. It's not scary, it's sturdy. Pretty impressive. It's got 536 horsepower, 745 newton meters of torque so it really does shift. One of the really entertaining things about this car is that it's got this boost paddle behind the steering wheel. If you pull it, it puts the car into sport mode, tightens up the seat bolsters so it hugs you like it loves you, and then you've got 10 seconds to utilize full performance. Now you might think that 10 seconds isn't a lot of time, but believe me, when you've got a car with this much power and this much torque, 10 seconds is quite a lot to get yourself into trouble. Plus, when it runs out, you just do it again. As for range, BMW suggests the i7 can manage up to 387 miles from its 101 kilowatt hour battery pack. Although that would suggest it's capable of delivering consumption of up to 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. But in my hands, the most I managed in winter temperatures at below motorway speeds was two miles per kilowatt hour, which according to my maths would give the car approximately 200 miles of range. The car will rapid charge at up to 200 kilowatts or 10 to 80% in around 34 minutes. I love that noise. Is that sound better than the sound of some petrol engines and diesel engines? Just think about it. Old school 7 Series with a big old diesel rattling around, or this. I'm going for this every time. I like this car, I really do. In fact, I might actually love it, which I know is controversial, but there's an awful lot to love. Yes, the design is different, but just look at how the M3 and M4 have grown on us. This car will do the same. It also drives pretty much flawlessly and has cutting edge technology, some of which we've never seen before. It's not perfect, usability is an issue, as we've seen in many modern cars, but that aside, the i7 is a technological tour de force with driving comfort and enjoyment to match. As far as luxury goes, this might be the new benchmark.